Our first item is a consideration to amend Act 601 of the Company Zoning Code or Section 601 of the Zoning Code to adopt tree planting requirements for single family and two family developments. James. So this um, is relative, relatively straightforward in terms of its uh, content uh, for, the, for the ordinance. Background on this. Um, some time ago, as, as you all may be aware and have, have set in meetings, folks have expressed concerns about uh, single family neighborhoods um, taking out trees. That's been sort of a, an express concern. It's been related to uh, several, several large uh, subdivision developments that have come in. As a result, the mayor asked me to kind of work with a, a task force or, or small committee to kind of look at some ideas in terms of how we address um, <coughs> mitigating those particular issues. Um, and so we've met a few times, uh, come up with some, some ideas. This was the sort of the low hanging fruit of the, the a code change or a policy that was relatively pretty easy to implement uh, and pretty straightforward in terms, of, in terms of adding it to the code. Um, Essentially, what this what this means is that there would be, with any new single family or two two family uh, dwelling that's constructed prior to it receiving a certificate of occupancy. So basically, prior to the project being closed out, they would have to plant one tree uh, with a minimum one and a half uh, inch diameter at breast height. So essentially, you know, it would have to be about an inch and a half around uh, when it it's that tall. Um, the responsibility for that is uh, building building permits and inspections to verify that that occurs. It would be the responsibility of the contractor to construct that. Um, in a, in its ordinance form, uh, for uh, you know going forward, uh, the idea is that we this would not be this would not take effect until March first, twenty twenty three. Uh, so really, when our next full planting season opens up uh, at that time. And then another aspect of this is that the sort of the planning department would be required um, to send out a lot of communication and education. So the other, the other aspect of it is we know that uh, we, we've got a lot of communication to convey to home builders that this is kind of a major change. It's gonna require them to, to purchase trees and, and do those sorts of things. And so we wanted to give them some time to adapt and figure out uh, what, what would need, need to be done. So, any questions? What if there are already trees there or a plentiful number, are they still gonna be required to just plant one more just for this? Or is this if there are no trees on the- The, the way it's currently written, they would have to, they would have to plant an, an additional one. Uh, we certainly, it certainly could be changed uh, if you wanted that there are no trees present, that there would be required to be a, a tree planted. That's a good idea. What's the average cost for a tree that you're suggesting for one and a half inch tree at breast height? I, I do not know. So we don't know what this would cost the contractors. It would all extra depend tax. on species as well. Yeah. I guess my. Do they have to come in and get a. So it would be the responsibility of the building permits inspection department to verify that it's it's being planted before they before they can occupy the premises. So on your final CO inspection, they would check it. Mm -hmm. Yep. I just think if there, just my thoughts, if there's already five trees there, I mean they're obviously not clearing them all out. They're being respectful of nature, so I don't know if it would be necessary for them to plant an additional. But if there's none at all. I, I think it's a good idea. So. James, this, so just update me. So this committee, just so I understand, there was this committee developed with council member Shelley Mel, Hal Crafton, Jim Rankin, Molly French, and Alexander Bainey. Mm -hmm. and, and this was their recommendation? This was, this, yeah, this was one of the low hanging fruit recommendations was to add this requirement. So it doesn't really do anything to mitigate the clearing of trees, which is what we're hearing so much about. It's just like we're going to take all the trees out and we're going to 
plant a nice tiny one in your yard. Yeah, the, I, the it's it is a it is a <laughs> very 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 difficult issue uh, yes, it is. because when you're dealing with a subdivision that's got a six thousand square foot lot, when we've got certain grading requirements and you've got to put in streets and you got to put in drainage and you you're, you're essentially left with no Great land systems. land to clear yeah. when you have larger lots that's that's certainly possible when you're looking at acre plus lots um so it, part of this what we're the recommendations that we're looking at is this is a a mitigation technique uh, and so it's it's really looking at it from a from a standpoint of a of a attrition we understand fully that the average urban tree lives about seven years. Uh, so either they don't get watered or they get pruned improperly so that they all die. So it's, it's about putting as many trees in the ground as, as possible in hopes that, that some will make it uh, in essence. And so uh, is it, is it, does it, does it replace a hundred trees that are on a property? No, uh, it absolutely does not. Are we going to provide education for taking care of the trees that we require the we plant? Yeah, that's that's part of the that's part of the the requirement that's included in the ordinance that we provide education on planting. Yeah, yeah like on commercial, right? Code enforcement can enforce you know you plant trees on a commercial development; they die, require them to be replanted. If these die or get cut down, or get cut down taken out once a CO, can code enforcement have any type of enforcement of that? We are not no. No, we're not so, going to so, so this could be planted one day for a CO and ripped out the next day and thrown in there. Yeah. So hypothetically in. hypothetically if I'm a builder, I plant and let you do my inspection day one and then you do that and then I pull it up and move it to the next yard over and I buy one two hundred fifty dollar exactly. tree instead of this over. Yeah, and over. Th I mean it's the and same thing. Exactly with, we're gonna do. Same thing with building code requirements. A lot of times they'll put rebar in, get it inspected and then pull the rebar out and then move on. So So we're not really accomplishing a whole well, lot with so, quick question for James or Alex for you. I assume by listing the members of the task force on here that everyone involved supports this recommendation. Absolutely. That would be a good question to ask them. I, well, I think that brings up a point that I have, I, I, and I'm not under, I always have process questions. Like, I would really like for the task force to come and present this, or their, their leader. Do they, I mean, it just, it kind of feels like, <laughs> I just meant like you know it kind of just feels like James is just running messages back and forth. So like, would it just be appropriate for? Was there a chairperson of the task force, Alexander? Was there, there was not. There's not a chairperson of it. It oh, was okay. it was basically just a staff initiative trying to get some uh, consensus yeah. from from some involved people in the community. Gotcha. Yeah. So. so Alex, do you agree with what I asked that? <laughs> Everyone listed supports this recommendation. The members of the task force. Can I abstain from that question? I, I, I can't speak for everybody. I'll, I don't. I'll I can't speak for everybody on, on about, the commission. I promise you. Look at force. those guys up there. This is all fine with them. Sure. I promise you. With all the, they've got three. If it, if it does not include right everybody, it, not everyone in support. It 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 was a involved. general consensus. Sure. I will say that. I sit and I go, it can be skirted, but at the end of the day, is someone really going to take the time to plan it, pull it up? I mean, I mean, you know how much integrity if you do that. It, and it's a, it's not a hindrance, I don't think, I mean, to building. It's a pretty small them. expense. I, I have one more question. What's, what are similar cities doing? What are other cities doing? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm sure you guys looked at that in research. Uh, I did. Yes. Um, Really, the only city that is doing a lot in this respect, uh, outside of maybe some some, there's the capital zoning area, which is a, basically ran by the state, uh, but that's not a not a very applicable uh, comparison. Right. Fayetteville is is probably the most uh, relatable. They, I th I'm pretty sure they have a very similar ordinance. What they do more of uh, is they're focused on tree preservation. Um, based on the discussion of the committee, that really wasn't something that we wanted to um, take a, a hard regulatory hammer to and say, you're going to have to keep trees on the property. Right. Uh, it was more, what, what ways can we uh, 
encourage tree planting? And then also, what incentives can we devise to make someone want to preserve trees? And you're correct, Fayetteville is messy. The city of Fayetteville ordinance places great emphasis on tree preservation. Trees on sites that measure greater than three inches in diameter at breast height are evaluated for preservation potential and are considered protected trees until a permit is issued for their removal. Wow. Yeah, so it's a, it's a much more aggressive ordinance. The other, reason, the other reason why is that I anticipate at the legislature, you know, in, in January, more than likely, they'll have a, a bill, because it almost got passed last time, that basically says you can't uh, prevent anyone from removing trees on their property. Um, so that, that's more than likely. So again, this, this is kind of an approach of, we'll ask them to plant trees, and if they, they want to remove them, that's fine. So I get the idea behind it. And you know I, I like trees, too, and I, I don't want us to be just a city of rooftops and no greenery or no anything like that. But I think maybe it could be based on acreage, like every half acre had a, had a tree. So uh, I'm sure that, that would likely result in, in more trees, I would, I would say, because if, if the base unit of analysis is it's, it's one lot and then one tree for every half acre, then you, you would end up with them being required to plant multiple trees on, on okay. one property. So I'm just thinking about these neighborhoods where these houses are on top of each other that we're seeing come up a lot. So if, um, if an individual, does this apply to individuals as well as business? As uh, It applies to anybody that constructs a, a single family or, or duplex business. dwelling. Yeah. Okay. Is there a contingency with the way things have happened the last couple of years with supply and demand? What if there's an issue where you just can't get trees like, and, and they can't move into their house without the... I mean, I'm pro-tree, obviously. I'm pro it's a really good question. It's, question. Good it's question. funny. It's funny. No, right? You can't get trees. It's I mean, a good question. question. I, never that I assume it would come to us for appeal at that point. <laughs> no, um, we, we could issue a TCO. I'm going to start tree farm when I roll off. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Any other questions? Okay, any, any other questions? That's a good question. Thank you, James. Okay, so this is a public hearing item. Anyone from the public want to speak in favor of this project or this idea? Anybody want to speak against it? Okay. So, do we need a motion on this? We considered that is, it. That is up to y'all. Yeah, I, so I'm putting, a, I, I guess, some thought into the fact that it says a rec, uh, additional recommendations to follow in the coming months mm -hmm. to some of the discussion that these may fall short. So I would move to approve the amendment to Conway Zoning Code 601 to establish tree planting requirements. I second. All in favor? Aye. Before we do that, <laughs> um, could we could we in, in, in part of that motion? Could you include as amended by the public hearing so that it includes a requirement that if there is existing tree, yeah, yeah, that that it I, yeah. as amended as amended by the public yeah. Wait, hearing. did we rush to that, Letitia? I mean, was there what were you saying? I mean, that's how I would support it. If I'm going to vote for it, then if there is already a tree there or multiple trees, I don't think that there should be a requirement to plant another one. Correct, yeah. yeah. So, so that, that it would be amended by the public hearing based that on That makes so much sense. Yeah. Agreed. This is a great idea. So <laughs> I, I am good with that amendment if I'd like to hear what Alexander has to say because, you know, they're the ones that have been working on this. So I, I support that, yeah. Okay, yeah, so I will, I will make that amendment to my motion. So why don't you just make a second. whole new yeah. motion? Let's just start over. <laughs> I will move to approve the amendment to Conway Zoning Code 601 to establish tree planting requirements in the situation where there are no existing trees okay. that meet the specifications listed in this amendment. And second. Okay. We have a motion by Adam and a second by Ethan. All in favor? 
Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes.